back at Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos, Texas, and the number one seed, Louisiana Raging Cajuns, have arrived for the Sun Belt Softball Championships. It's the quarterfinal matchup as the Raging Cajuns take on the number four seed and host Texas State Bobcats. For Texas, a transfer from Arkansas. 1-1, one, one, fly ball, left field. That should plate the run. Hudak with the grab. Here comes the left-handed throw in. It's strong, but not strong enough to get McDowell. And on the throw, Oltman goes to third, and the Bobcats have the early lead. They appeal to third base to see if McDowell had left early. She hadn't, and a 1-0 lead for Texas State. Career-high 15 extra base hits this season. Hit her, and it's 1-1. So Grimion hit with the pitch on the 2-2. Rawls touches home plate. Bases remain loaded. And it's now 1-1. Sophomore out of Frankfurt, Kentucky, and transfer from Toledo. Goes after the first pitch and skies it to the right field. This should be the final out of the inning. And it is as Klein comes in to make the running grab. And the Ragin' Cajuns do strand the bases loaded. But they do get a run on the hit batter. And we'll go to the second, tied at one. Ball gets away. Here comes Damiani. She will score. And the Bobcats have a 2-1 lead. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. A run in, a runner at third. In the air, should end the inning. Dalton has it, inning over. But the Bobcats jump back on top. They do it with a couple of hits and then score on a wild pitch. Curry, the first baseman, started the game as the DP. Ball bounces away. Here comes O'Neal, and she is safe, and we're tied. Heads up play by O'Neal. She took off running immediately as soon as the ball bounced away from Davis. She didn't wait to see how far and that was ultimately what enabled her to get home so easily. Yeah, O'Neal was 100% ball in the dirt as this ball just skidded away from the catcher, Haley Davis. Take another look here, and it gets her handcuff right on the wrist, and the ball scoots away, and now we have a tie ball game. She's got to be the DP. She lines this one to the left field for the base hit. That's going to score Grimion. Cajuns have the lead. Como in second base with a double. Second and third, still nobody out. Raging Cajuns lead for the first time in this game. For Como in her 42nd RBI, and now here's Kara Grimion, or Courtney Grimion, I should say. That's going to plate another run as Gray touches, and now on the throw to the plate, Courtney Grimion goes to second base, and it's 4-2. Teams in home runs, top slugging percentage in Sun Belt action. Hit to the first baseman, and Bell will step on the bag, and they are able to get out of it. Gets by Courtney Grimion into right field. Here comes Krennic. Here comes the throw to the plate, and she is going to be safe. The Bobcats need one more. Grimion to Grimion, and the Raging Cajuns advance in the winner's bracket. You know, we've been off for a few days, and we only played one game, I think, in the last uh, 10, 15 days. And I expect them not to be sharp, and I, I think just to survive, because Texas State's got a really good ball club, extremely well coached. And, and then being on their home field, I knew they were going to come out with a lot of fight. And, and we can play better, we can play sharper, but when you come off a 10, 12-day layoff, kind of expect it maybe to get, take us a game or two to get in a flow, and then we need that pressure. So it's a really good game for us, because they're just applying pressure all the way to the end and uh, hopefully it'll get us ready for the next two days. Well, you still showed that you were the team that we all thought you would be this season, and one in particular player was Lexi Como. How did she stand out today? Uh, she's an amazing player, you know, and I, I had her, you know, I put her in for Shomo, and as I told her for the game, you know, she's got so much confidence. I know I could not introduce her in the starting lineup and say, you're batting in the eight hole, where I think like Bailey Curry, if I do that with her, I felt like I need her to be out there as a DH just to, so that she is confident when she comes up. And so it's great to have a very mature player with a lot of confidence. And then she knows how to play the game. The first ball, the wind hadn't been blowing in. It would have been out uh, in her first at bat. And that was really a big RBI. She's just a clutch player. And maturity in the circle on Summer Ellis. And how do you evaluate her play today? She was great. You know, I think she gave up. Uh, they've got to do race. But I think she gave up like four hits. And, and, you know, she just controlled the game. And that, would, for her, was, you know, a below average performance. But she was still awesome.
lastly, just the message to your team moving forward into tomorrow. Uh, win. Uh, it doesn't matter in the postseason how you win, if it's pretty, if it's ugly. If you win by 10 or you win by one, just win. And so for that fact, I'm proud of them. They come out and competed really hard today and, and figured out a way to win. That's what they've done all year. They just find ways to win. Coach, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you.